Ugh, I'm I'm just convinced that we can't have nice things. We just can't have nice things in fantasy football because it was confirmed that J.K. Dobbins has torn his Achilles and he's out for the remainder of the 2023 season. Now, obviously in redraft, you just cut him, but in Dynasty, it's a completely different discussion because there's so much more that goes into this injury that affects J.K. Dobbins' long-term Dynasty value. So let's just touch on it real quick. To me, it's as likely, if not maybe even more likely, that J.K. Dobbins actually just retires from this injury, like Tariq Cohen did after his Achilles injury a couple years after his ACL injury than it is Dobbins returns to any sort of fantasy relevance as an RB2 or anything better than that. You could even look at Jamal Charles, who tore his ACL in 2011, came back, was fantastic for three years, and then tore his other ACL and never did anything ever again. And that was two ACL tears, not even an Achilles tear, which we know is way more devastating to a player's career than an ACL injury is. Honestly, the median outcome here is that Dobbins doesn't retire. He recovers and he plays. He signs somewhere as like a vet minimum contract or something like that but he just never gets that juice back into his game. And he's more like how we view like Melvin Gordon, Deonta Foreman, Latavius Murray right now. He'll be relevant, quote unquote relevant, and maybe string together some solid games, but he won't be even more than just bench depth on your roster, if not even a roster clogger. That's just too good to cut, but not good enough to ever start. And those are just the worst people to have on your dynasty roster. So because of that fact, I'm honestly at the point where I would sell him for just about anything. Now I'd keep him over like a random fourth or whatever that player equivalent is like Demario Douglas or Tyrion Davis Price. I'm not moving him for any of those kind of picks, but any second round pick over the next like five to six years, even down into like 2030, if you can trade that far away, is an auto accept. But you're honestly not getting that. So more likely, a couple of thirds is what you're probably going to get. And I would take a couple of thirds because at least with thirds, they're going to be easier to trade away moving forward than J.K. Dobbins because they don't take up a roster spot, they aren't currently injured, and they could present more upside if you hit on the right player at the draft. Now, think about it. Would you rather have Dobbins or Luke Musgrave right now, or Dobbins or Jalen Hyatt, maybe Jaden Reed or Marvin Mims. I saw multiple drafts in many leagues where each of those guys fell to the third round. And I would take all of those guys over J.K. Dobbins right now. Now, if you're competing and you want to move Dobbins for any running back that's just going to score you some points, I'd look at maybe Ezekiel Elliott. Maybe you get Jeff Wilson, who's also on IR, but is expected to be back in a few weeks, should have a solid role in this Dolphins offense. Maybe you get Damian Harris before he plays tonight. Maybe you get Chase Brown, who was an active Sunday, but we're still hopeful can be involved down the road in this Bengals offense. I honestly don't think that you're going to get anyone really better than that right now, but if you get guys like Roshan Johnson or Jalen Warren or Ty J Spears, maybe you're able to buy low on Antonio Gibson, who did absolutely nothing this week. All of those guys are smash accepts for J.K. Dobbins right now, but I honestly, I don't think you're getting anything like that for Dobbins. You're looking at Zeke or Jeff Wilson or anything more in that kind of tier of players. In fact, there is one trade in the analyzer since yesterday, which was JK Dobbins for Justice Hill and a third round pick. So there you go. Two third round picks essentially, but at least you get a shot on some production with one of J.K. Dobbins' replacements in this Ravens offense. The last thing I want to touch on was I saw this tweet from Scott Connor about what he's doing with J.K. Dobbins, and he mentions that if you're not able to move him for even a fourth or some fab, then you should just cut him in Dynasty. And I do disagree with that. I'm not cutting him in Dynasty, at least not right now. Most dynasty leagues out there, you have an IR spot. I throw them on there, wait a couple months before your trade deadline or before the fantasy playoffs start, because then teams know if they're actually competing this year or not. Right now, it's week two. Everyone still believes that they're competing, even if you know that they really aren't. But that changes by like week 12, week 13, when they're three and nine, four and nine, and 11th place in the league. And those are the teams that I would be targeting at that point in the season to say, hey, if you're looking toward 2024 already, here's J.K. Dobbins. Just give me your 24 and your 25 thirds, and you can have J.K. Dobbins. That's way better than cutting him because you're not getting anything right now, especially if you have an IR spot to move him off your roster, and that allows you to pick somebody else up on waivers this week. But hey, while we're talking about competing and making moves and what you can do to kind of rebuild your roster if you just lost J.K. Dobbins, do not make the same mistake that I made that has ended up crippling one of my dynasty rosters. And if you want to know what that mistake is, then you can watch that video right up here.